Hello, welcome to the Art of Renovation Live. I'm your host, Paul Foster from Contact Renovations and Custom Homes. This week, we are talking about closet design. And uh, yeah, closets, man, they can become kind of a no man's land when it comes to a home renovation or a new build, depending on how you plan to finish these spaces. And there's so many options. They're often overlooked. Um, they often aren't done well, so you don't maximize your usable space. Um, yeah, so that's why we're doing a show on closet design. It's an important piece of your home. And like any other space, you need to plan it well. Our guest this week is uh, Reese Schulte from California Closets. So we'll call him that uh, the call cl closet expert. So yeah, so it's a, it'll be a fun show. There's lots of cool options we can talk about. We'll show lots of good images. Reese is going to be at the showroom over at California Closets, can show us some of the options they have there. And uh, like I said, it's an important part of your space. Too often it's overlooked or poorly done. And I think it's worth some, uh, some extra attention, which we'll give it today. So uh, I can see Bruce, uh, Reese is in the background there. So before I uh, bring him in, I'm gonna introduce him. So uh, Reese is a design consultant over at California Closets. He's a degreed industrial designer that specialized in space management and organization, organization during his six years with California Closets. Any space can become beautiful and functional with the right design with California Closets. And there's other options too, which we'll talk about a little bit today, but I really wanted to showcase California Closets because I think they really do maximize the ability to, um, you know, create storage and good design and, and lots of functionality within the closet space. So. Anyhow, I'm gonna send Reese a bit of an invite here. Give me one quick second. I'm just gonna pull open some info. All right, there he is. Bear with me while I navigate here. There we go. Okay. So yeah, so the closet. I guess we could insert joke here, but I think it's one of those things. Reese, welcome to the show. Hello, thanks for having me. Really excited. All right. Awesome. Yeah. So in my little preamble there in the beginning, I think um, like too often the closet's kind of overlooked and like we've been doing renovations for a long time. And it's actually funny how many times we've re fully renovated a house and they've asked us to just leave the closet empty because they don't know what they want to do with it yet. And that's the thing is like, it's a space that you interact with every day and you don't realize how much it impacts your day-to-day -day routine or the general wellness of, of your person until you have something that's really efficiently designed to the point where you're actually happy about you know uh, an overlooked space like a closet or, or a mudroom or a variety of other spaces that California closets can do around the house. Because um, storage is, is kind of one thing that's universal that we all need, but we really don't consider until uh, we absolutely have to. Right. And I think like, there's the utilitarian aspect of storage, but I think it's too often, like there's some, some beautiful options and you can actually turn your closet into kind of a showpiece. And that's something that I think is worth discussing because, you know, I mean, like anything that we do, there's an entry level basic option up to these, you know, advanced, very fancy options that come with a higher price point. And I think that, um, you know, today we should talk a bit about all of the options because I know even within your product lines, there's different levels and options along the way. So before we go too far, let's talk a bit about the giveaway item this week. So thank you so much to uh, California Closets have offered up um, $250 worth of California Closet essentials. So it's hangers, jewelry boxes, watch winders and other accessories. Um, all right, there you go. You're showing them in the background. I have some images here too. I'm going to try and pull up, but just a matter of getting these things organized here. All right, giveaway item. So to qualify for the draw today, you need to answer this question. In what year was California Closets founded? All right, so um, we haven't given you the answer yet. So I guess you'll have to listen to a minute for a minute and we can talk a bit about California Closets where it was founded, when, and then from there, we'll move on into some of these show topics. So Reese, I'll give you a minute to chat about, about that. Well, I'm not gonna answer that question right away, but we will get to that. Um, 
Well, let's let's touch on the essentials and we'll kind of go from the small to big because uh, that's really reversed to what we do with our process because California Closets offers a complimentary in-home design consultation. And we basically bring the whole showroom to you if you can't make it into uh, any of our showrooms. Um, we have one in uh, South Edmonton, one in St. Albert, and then of course one in Calgary. So, mm -hmm. um, so before we get too far into that, where did California Closets start? Of course, California. And uh, it will be uh, back in, you know, s several years from now, uh, or sorry, several years ago, um, over 40, that's your first hint. And mm -hmm. uh, it was from a young business student who decided his closet needed some work. And uh, he decided to, to take a crack at it, came up with a great concept to, to revitalize the storage in his university dorm closet and uh, incorporated it. So and now here we are today with uh, California Closets, uh, Closets Canada, and a whole bunch of different fran franchises under those different corporations. So it's a very, very um, long lasting company with a really excellent brand and then of course since uh california closets franchise alberta has uh all local manufactured product or a wide variety of local manufactured product and local distributed product as well as hiring everybody local and um and living here in edmonton alberta or calgary all right well that's it's great good to know the background i get often asked what's what's with the name and i would obviously assume it must have started somewhere in california but you never know this could be a backstory that uh would be unexpected so i guess let's let's answer the question for them so people who can't watch the whole show now have a chance to quickly enter so um the year that california college was established was 1978 1978 there you go so uh, if you didn't know, now you do. Enter your answer into the comments. That'll enter you into the giveaway draw at the end of the show. Uh, $250 worth of accessories, some of which you'll see in the background here. Um, watch winders, jewelry boxes, hangers, miscellaneous accessories. So there you go. All right. So moving right along here, let's talk a little bit about... You want to talk about layout options first, or you want to talk about your product options? Because I think they kind of go hand in hand to a certain extent. 100%. So let's go right over to the product. So I'm going to take you with me to one of our design centers. This is the South Showroom Design Center. And uh, we use a press board. It's called TFL board, so thermally fused laminate. It's a hardwood chip board that's resin impregnated and then squished down to either 19 millimeter or 30 millimeter thicknesses. And we have a whole bunch of custom options and uh, a slew of standard accessories, colors and finishes that we can basically design anything out of. So we have 19 different color finishes um, that we can basically build anything out of. So that leads me into the, the smallest region closet or little bookshelf or uh, linen closet very popular, up into giant walk-in closet, uh, mudroom, garage systems, media, desks, wall beds, you name it. So, yeah. and then we can really spice things up just depending on what the scope of your, your project is or your taste or your budget. And uh, we have a whole bunch of different stuff, including eco resins um, and high gloss product, we have a specific countertop called Chroma. It is really cool. And we can actually add lighting to anything, including some of the countertop options. Nice. So before we get too far into some of the options there, uh, for anybody who's just joining the show, welcome to the Art of Renovation Live. Today we're talking about closet design. And we're going to talk now a bit about different closet configurations and layout. So in the image behind me there is kind of your standard bedroom closet. Okay. So let's talk a bit about those because that's where we generally you'll see the average home has got a shelf and rod. Maybe they've splurged and they have a couple bonus shelves, but I think we should talk a bit about what you can do to maximize your, your typical bedroom closet. And it's everything from the door type. So in this image I have behind me, you have a slider door system. Most homes will come with bifolds, which um, drive me crazy, but they're very practical. But let's talk a bit about your options there and what your thoughts are on how you would maximize storage within your standard bedroom closet. So the first thing that we need to do when we're looking at not only maximizing a space, but optimizing. And I like to differentiate between the two, not sounding too pretentious, um, but 
when you're, you know, maximizing a space, I would say, you know, we can, we can seat 15 people in your living room on eight couches, but you really can't use the living room effectively. Lots of seating, but doesn't work too well. Optimization is going to give you the excellent feel and benefit all that storage space. So that's pretty important. Um, so for instance, this closet that we're looking at in the showroom is a, technically we have a bunch of different levels and I don't want to get caught up on that terminology, but it's a floating system. So it doesn't touch the floor. So if you want to keep your baseboard trim intact and you want to kind of have that best bang for your buck, as far as looks to material and storage space combined or for, um, this is going to be the route we would take. And the most important with this is if you have a deep return corner, where the wall kind of meets the closet system, we can actually mm -hmm. system so you can easily access those hangers into the corner. Nice. I guess let's talk about the raised, uh, the raised unit for a second. And I think that's a great thing to talk about briefly because as far as closets go, they can be a bit of a dust trap sometimes if it's one of those ones that don't get used much. It depends what space of the home it's in, um, like a rear ranchy, for example. So having them raised off the floor is great. It really helps with with cleaning. And then you can throw your shoes down there and whatnot, and you're not worried about making a mess on your on your finished closet surface, right? Absolutely. Um, really, really great to minimize those the, the surface area for dust and for cleaning, as well as we can, uh, I, I like to use the expression that most butchers use, which is trim the fat on the design. So we can get rid of redundant material and make way for more storage space. So we can actually get the clothing closer to the ground, if you notice here. So all of the... Mm -hmm having the showroom is specifically made just as a showroom style object. It's not actually real clothing, um, but your, your actual shirt would fit closer to that bottom shelf. So then that way we can get more hanging space and you get that upper storage space boxes behind your head or soft objects, which is really important. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I think it's, it's good. Like we see it quite often now where there's lots of options for drawers, shelves. You want to put little baskets on there, various organize your details, which can be really helpful depending on how you plan to use the space and what you have a lot of. Maybe you've got a ton of shoes. Maybe you have a lot of ties and shirts and depends on the, the person. So I think like any project that we do, we generally try to customize it to suit the client. And I think the same would go for your closet design. Think about your wardrobe. What do you use mostly? What do you need to access easily, right? And plan it around that, right? And then also, you know, there's obviously some aesthetics around options for finishes that we can talk about where it ties into, you know, the design of your home. And the thing is with California closets, we design to a space budget of our, each one of our clients. Um, and, you know, there's tons of great little accessories like these slide out packs where they are just super efficient. They're, they're very well engineered. They're very hardy and robust as well as a great finished aesthetic and completely adjustable. This is the namesake of California closets. What you see is not what you're stuck with. You can move things extremely easily, including the handles, all of the shelves, any of the accessories. And if you have same width components, you can even shuffle drawers or belt racks or tie racks or pant hangers or laundry hampers. Um, really sky's the limit. Um, and that's, that's what keeps these designs kind of growing with you as your lifestyle changes or your family grows or you downsize. So mm -hmm. just get the most out of every little inch. Absolutely. So I think it's, you know, it's one of those spaces people often just go, it's just a closet, right? Why would I want to put a few thousand dollars into my closet organizer? And I think, you know, uh, it's something that too often people just kind of cut that corner and you end up with kind of a cluttered closet space. And this is where I think you can do something really great um, to make it useful. And, and you'll actually be very proud of and grateful for the fact that you've now got a well-organized closet um, well, for a variety of reasons. It's funny to say that one of my, you know, catchphrases would be like, oh, you know, we're, you're not eating Christmas dinner in here. You know, why do we need to spend that amount of money in the closet? Even the most simple spaces at a very modest budget. And I'm saying, you know, maybe between $2,000 for a reach-in closet, it looks like a million bucks and it mm -hmm. really enhances the space. It's, it's a it's a space of pride. And honestly, I've shown all of my friends and family, my California closet systems, and it's a very kind of thing. Once you have a system done, you, you want to kind of have everybody over and take a look at it and say, look at how much we're getting out of this and look how good it looks and look at what I can do with it. So, uh, no, I have no, no shame whatsoever in showing people my custom storage systems by California closets. 
Yeah, no doubt. And I guess, I guess the image I have behind me here, I guess same as yours, there's no doors on this unit, right? So many people will go and put closet doors on. Like I said earlier, it could be a bifold or maybe you're going to go to some double doors or a slider system. I think that if you have a nicely appointed closet, you don't necessarily need doors and you can put the budget of that door spend towards your closet organizer. So that's something to consider. Depends on you and how you, um, how you feel about having your, your contents visible. I think if it's well organized, uh, it becomes kind of a display um, and easier to keep in a nice organized, clean, tidy fashion. Now, what I usually tell people if they're dissatisfied with their door choices, with their current closet, if they move to an open style closet system where they take the doors off completely, California Closets also designs and sells uh, triple sliding doors or double sliding doors that are just a fantastic part of the product line. They glide like butter. They're a lubricant free system. So all you do is vacuum them, vacuum them out once in a while. And we can, you know, make them kind of almost any style. Um, but then if you start with that open closet and you feel you want to add them down the road, that's just a simple, you know, call or click away where we can design sliding doors for you and really contribute to your system. And if you don't, if you decide that you don't need them, then you know what, you've got a great closet with a, with an open and it works fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so if anybody is joining up, let's uh, talk about the giveaway item here. So California Closets has offered up $250 of accessories. So it's um, hangers, jewelry boxes, watch winders, and other closet accessories. So if you're interested in winning some of these today, you need to enter in the comments the date uh, on which, the year of which California Closets was established. All right, I've seen the answer in some of the comments now. So if you scroll back, you'll be able to find them. And enter that in your comments, and we'll get to that uh, later in the show. Towards the end, we'll announce the winner of the giveaway item. For anybody just tuning in now, this is the Art of Renovation Live. We're talking about closet design. Now we're going to talk specifically about walk-in closets and what some of the options are there within how to maximize use of, of a walk-in space. So I guess, Reese, if you have a section there you want to go to, or we can just talk about some of the images I have up in the background, whatever works best for you. Um, what are some of those common mistakes you'll find people make within uh, laying out the walk-in closet? So number one is assuming everything needs to be a wardrobe style system with doors on it. And that's very similar to this one here. So let's go ahead and open that. Um, this wardrobe style system has everything behind the doors. It's closed. It's beautiful and in, uh, it's very practical, but the thing is it's not necessary in every walk-in closet. We can go from something like this, which is a combination of open and wardrobe systems to something that is completely open. And what this does is it gets rid of that extra material and it allows us to have our bodies in the space to get things out easier and less material equals more space for us to store things as well. The second common mistake, again, is that bridging shelf. So we see how the corners are done here and we can access that corner easily and we can see everything in that corner. What happens all the time, and this is with a lot of just standard closets, either an MDF or wire racking, we end up with this side panel jammed right against the edge of the hanger and it gives you no room to actually get things in and out. So that's probably you know one of the first and foremost issues that I see when when I go into redesign a closet because if you can't get something out and you can't see it why is it even there and it usually ends up getting tossed away or again you purge your closet when you get your new design in and uh, you say oh you know this was three seasons ago or if anybody's like me it's COVID and it's probably 10 pounds ago um, so there's no <laughs> way I'm getting back into that so <laughs> that's a good point I think you know, like that, that little dead space in the corner or that really hard to get to spot, it, it really is kind of the Achilles heel of the average closet where you have stuff that it's hard to, to access. You don't like to reach your hand back there for a variety of reasons. And then later on, you're surprised to find, oh, I, ha I had this. Oh, that's where it was. Whatever. With, so with a big part of any storage space, you never really want to take things out. Like you don't want to shuffle things out to kind of get things in or vice versa. So you want to have everything easy to see and easy to access all the time. Um, a great solution for something like that is actually a different construction style. So this is another version of a walk-in closet, 
And California Closets operates in a bunch of different levels, but only two construction styles. One of them is Virtuoso, which is what we're looking at here. And it gives you that really, really clean, contemporary look for your closet space. And even with this, as you can see, there's no side panels, which kind of makes it interesting. We still leave that room in the corner. So we, we get that happy space in the corner um, instead of that angry space. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And how, I mean, how do we address that in smaller space? Like we just finished a renovation for a client and they have a relatively smaller walk-in closet. And um, it really presented some design challenges because you're trying to maximize how much you can store within the space. I mean, that last thing you showed, it, it's nice and airy, but it's also in a very large space. So how do you address kind of packing in, maximizing storage um, availability within, you know, that pleasing function, I guess. What, do you ever have any shortcuts to that or? Yeah, so number one is we, if, if we can turn that corner, like in this reach-in closet, we definitely want to do that. So that way we can get that full wall width on either the shorter wall or the adjoining wall to the closet. Secondly, we have to get these double hang spaces integrated. So with the closet rod on the top and the closet rod on the bottom, that mm -hmm. is give you your best bang for your buck for hanging space. And then that way it leaves lots of room for drawers and accessories. So the other one, which is a very practical way to design is we want to group like components together. Let me take you for a ride so I can show you how this works well um, in a couple of systems here. So what we've done in this monster walk-in closet in our showroom is we've put the wardrobe system, the drawers and shelves all together. So then that way, essentially all the, everything is as close to flush face as it can be on one wall. Mm -hmm. All the, everything in the island is drawers. So then that way it's gonna free up those side walls for hanging space. Not everybody has room for an island, but the thing is we can do drawers and shelves on one wall and hanging space on another wall, and it will give you that versatility. So then that way we can keep things deeper, keep things shallow, maneuver those items that we need to store where we want them. So then that way, again, we can reduce either material, reduce cost, or gain space or all the above. Absolutely. And, and I, it's some great advice there. I mean, I think in the end, ultimately, um, really, it's, it's worth your time to sit down with a designer and really focus on how to maximize, you know, the use of that space that you have, whether it's a small closet or a large walk-in closet, I think you know, you have to spend a bit of time on it. And, you know, like I said earlier in the show, too often that closet gets overlooked as well. We'll do that, whatever at the end, we'll figure that out. It's kind of an afterthought and you end up with a, a poorly laid out space. that's not that usable or it could be far better uh, used, maximize and also could be very attractive if you, if you opt to give it some attention. Well, the one, again, with, with the California closets process and the proprietary CAD program that we use is it gives you the, experience of finished product without spending any money. So we're really going to eliminate mistakes and we can try out a variety of options in this space to figure out what works best for you, what works best for your space and for your budget. So we can see things in real time on the CAD similar to what you would find on HGTV or any of the other renovation shows. Um, so we can sit down, design with you right there at your kitchen table or island or virtually if you prefer virtual consult. So then that way you see exactly what you're getting very literal detailed representation um, in your space and then we know exactly how much space you're getting too where we can actually you know catalog out the linear feet of hanging space as well as you know your your shelving space drawers etc mm -hmm. so it's really really effective yeah sounds sounds good so anybody who's joining this is the art of renovation live we're talking about closet design and now we're going to talk about some of the bells and whistles that are available out there so we talk about lighting we're talking about pullouts Reese, if you can kind of run us through some of those things that are certainly options, um, definitely an upgrade. But let's talk a bit about those because I think they can be a real game changer when it comes to how you visually interact with and feel about your space. And, and uh, so let's see what you guys have to offer there and we'll, uh, we'll talk about it in detail. Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So we're going to start with the stuff that is kind of the most approachable as far as uh, an add-on is concerned. So hooks. Hooks are easy, they're very inexpensive, and they're a great space saver and space gainer if, again, we're, we're really pinched. This pantry unit is a good example of a small L-shaped space. Um, I like to think as everything is a, it can be a closet. So, you know, a pantry is just a closet for food. 
hopefully you can pick up on my mentality. A mudroom is just a closet for boots and shoes. Um, yeah. be a lot more hooks there. The other thing that we're, we're looking at are the small slide out accessories and California closets has worked with a company called tag. They're amazing. They're actually a group of engineers and they have spent a, probably way too much time creating absolutely stunning slide out accessories. So a tie rack, a scarf rack. One of my favorites is the pull down rack. So imagine that way, way taller where you would pull it down and uh, pick off your piece of clothing and then pop it back up. It's all hydraulically activated. We have our belt rack in the corner that slides out. Now this one is a space saving mirror. So you can barely see the profile. Um, this is not gonna be a great angle, but bear with me. It slides out completely, hyper extends past the hangers. All right. Length mirror in your closet. Yeah, those are some great options for sure. And, you know, again, it, just, it really packs it in. You're maximizing, you know, what you get out of that. Well, in, that, in this case, it's a larger space, but still. Um, these, these, yeah. any, any of the designs, this is just, you know, where we have it displayed in the showroom. But you can fit this in a reach-in closet. You can fit it in a walk-in closet. You can fit it in a mudroom. You can fit it anywhere. And so then we have open style storage spaces, uh, hampers in a couple of different ways. So if you're looking for a laundry hamper, we've got you covered. We have in belt organizers and drawer inserts, jewelry. Oh my goodness, jewelry. Don't even get me started on it. <laughs> I'm not a guy who really wears a lot of jewelry, but my wife, when I started working for California Closets, you know, six years ago, she immediately went right to the jewelry organizers and they are gorgeous. That sounds like a great way to segue into our giveaway item. So if you um, are just tuning in, we have a giveaway item today. Thank you so much, Reese and California Closets. We have $250 worth of California Closets essentials. These are hangers, jewelry boxes, watch winders, and other closet accessories. Uh, here's a couple examples of them here. There's some hangers Reese is showing us. To enter into the draw, you need to enter the year in which California Closets was established in the comments. And at the end of the show, we'll do a random draw for, uh, for the 250 and accessories. All right. So let's see here. Reese, anything you want to talk about specifically? I guess we're talking about some of these options still. So um, let's talk a bit about some lighting. So this is the Art of Innovation Live. I'm your host, Paul Foster. This week, we're talking about closet design. Let's talk a bit about lighting options within a closet. All right, so I'm going to go over to our lighting display and California Closets has really gone leaps and bounds to integrate lighting into almost every area. It is really, really well refined, well designed, and it's very seamless looking. So let's take a peek. So we can light up, oop, it flickers a little bit, but we can light up shelves. That's, that's just on the Instagram. The lights don't actually flicker. There you go. <laughs> I go on the right side. They're all LED. They average out between about 100,000 hours or up burn time. So that is more than enough time for any LED light. Um, they come in little puck lights, LED ribbon lights in uh, high intensity and low intensity. We have a couple of different options for switches. One of them is a touch-free switch where we can just turn things off just by putting your hand in front of it. Um, we have the drawer options where we can light up drawer boxes. We can light up behind doors that are motion activated. We have your classic push button switch. And then also RGB lighting. So if you want a real funky, cool disco closet um, or any space, we can do RGB. And we have Bluetooth apps that you can hook up to your phone to control all of your lighting in any of your California closet systems or they can come with remotes, or again, just a simple switch. All the wires are integrated into the system themselves. So again, completely seamless, no wires. We cover everything up and you end up with a beautiful look. Mm -hmm, absolutely. I think one thing to talk about too, we do a lot of like under cabinet and just kind of backlighting and background lighting within, well, a lot of the spaces we renovate, but one of them is the, is the motion sensor activated under cabinet light. So I get this kind of a toe kick light in this image I'm showing in the background up top. And it's a great thing if you had a closet you're sharing with your spouse, you have a different schedule, you need to go in there. Maybe you don't have doors on the closet. It could be a pass through walk in that that motion sensor timed light. So you walk in there, it's a light glow at the bottom. 
uh, gives you a chance to access what you need without cranking all the lights on, without waking up your spouse. And uh, yeah, you're not reaching for switches. It's a pretty, it's a really, really practical option. And generally speaking, it isn't super expensive to do it. Actually, so if you if you wanted to, we can light up toe kicks, door boxes, doors, drawers, you name it. Um, and they can be motion sensor where we want to put the motion sensor. One thing that's newer to California closets, which is really slick, is called lighting. So some people refer to the side panels as gables. Uh, California closets refer to them as partitions because they partition up the components. Um, but this, this uh, partition lighting allows for full adjustability of the shelving while completely lighting the space. So traditionally, you'd have to light up each shelf individually and you lose all your adjustability. And with this system, um, it's, it's more of that, again, salon style look um, with full adjustability. So that's really, really slick. Yeah, yeah, see, that's a great, great design for sure. Well done. All right, so we've talked about lighting and some of the options that we have. Um, let's talk a bit about, I suppose, um, some of the other options that are available in the showroom right now. And generally, like, I know that you guys do, it's California closets, but you do other spaces too. So let's talk about something, um, that I'm going to call it a Murphy bed. I know it's technically a wall bed, but it's commonly known as the Murphy bed. So let's talk a bit about that. And I know that's not specific to closet design, but, um, the, so many closets can be incorporated to it inside the room and it's, and it's design and function and, and, Mur and the Murphy bed or the wall bed really can tie into that. Absolutely. And so I, I, you know, before I came to California closets, I really wasn't well practiced in wall beds. And so, you know, a Murphy bed is kind of like Kleenex to facial tissue. It's just a specific brand name of wall bed. Uh, California closets, again, has really gone leaps and bounds to make sure they're at the top quality for a lot of their products, including wall beds. The hey, wall beds. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah. I just got to reintroduce it because it's a great segment to talk about. So this is the Art of, Re Art of Renovation Live. I'm your host, Paul Foster. We're talking about closet design and we're taking a quick trip down a road to discuss the Murphy bed or the wall bed. So you can continue resort to cut you off there. Oh, certainly anything you need, Paul. Um, this one in particular is called a soft motion wall bed. So what I'm going to do, bear with me in my terrible camera angles. What it does is it stops about a, you know, about a fifth of the way down. So it doesn't put itself down and then if you give it a good pull, which is actually a soft pull. It'll just help itself down to the floor. It's all hydraulically activated and hence soft motion, like a soft closing door or drawer and fits right in with our product line. So it comes in twin, double and queen uh, with the built-in bamboo slats underneath. You can kind of see a little glimpse of them there. So no box spring needed and they fit all standard size mattresses, either 10 inch or 12 inches thick. Nice. So <clears throat> just to clarify why I've taken us off on this little tangent is because the Murphy bed or the wall bed can really help to make and create a multi-use space. And here you can see how that wall bed now is incorporating into a desk system, which in a smaller apartment or condo, or in a house where you really have a limited footprint can also tie into your closet. So I think it's something to really consider when you're talking about how to use your space and maximizing the use of it, whether it be your floor plan in general, and this image behind me, this is a basement that we developed. We incorporated a, a Murphy bed into it to help create the theater area, the gym area, and there's a guest, guest bedroom all in one space. The same concept would apply to your closet and how you approach it and your room. If you happen to have a bedroom without a built-in closet, well, now you have some options here and maybe incorporating the Murphy bed gives you an office space, a closet, and a bed at the same time. Now, again, great point. Um, we've done systems where you have, you know, your wall bed, your office space and a wardrobe all integrated onto one wall. And it's very efficient as far as space saving is concerned and then storage, uh, particularly when you're looking at the guest room den or the office den combination, uh, particularly now, um, given present circumstances, you know, not just in Alberta, but globally, everybody's working from home. Everybody needs a great workspace, but then you might also need a little bit of extra company space you know, in 2026 when we all have company over again. But that being said, this wall bed tucks up, ooh, nice and neat. 
that's just my old age pains coming into play. <laughs> it's actually not that they're they're not they're not heavy at all, even on a queen size mattress. Um, and then California closets. What separates us from a lot of other you know potential wall bed installations or or other companies is nothing is prefabricated other than the wall bed mechanism and that it fits a standard mattress. We can do anything you want with the office. We can make it look pretty much like anything. We can add upper cabinetry. We can take things away. We can make it as simple or as complicated as you may want for your taste, your space, and your budget. Um, and of course, nothing is uh, prefabricated, like I said, with the exception of the wall bed itself, uh, our drawer boxes, and our standard accessories. So there's no awkward filler strip to the wall that's you know eight inches wide. Um, everything is exactly as it should be fit to that specific space. Not to mention, we do have another model of wall bed where it has a desk and a shelf that are gyroscopic legs that fold down. Unfortunately, it's not in this showroom, it's in our St. Albert showroom, but it's another option. So if you want the desk on the wall bed and you want that to become the legs, so you can just leave your stuff on the desk, granted that it's not over about 10 inches tall, um, plug in your laptop, leave it in, let your wall bed down, it works out great. Nice. Yeah, so I think really like the, I guess the theme here is maximizing use of space, right? So that's exactly what the wall bed, the Murphy bed is great for. Same thing when you approach your closet, you really need to think about the big picture, how you're gonna use that space. So it tends to be one of those nooks and crannies that can be overlooked. Um, you know, we, we need to change that because it's an important part of your home. Too often people complain about a lack of storage space in their home. And it just comes down to, well, maybe they aren't really making good use of the space that they have. I completely agree. It's the quality of the space and not necessarily the scale. Um, and, you know, you can have a thousand square foot house up to, you know, 10,000 square foot house, which California Closets has done work in all of that sort of range. And, uh, it's that quality of space that we're looking for. So then you're using what you have effectively for your needs and then also keeping a, a, an aesthetic value in there uh, for, for your own personal use or for resale. So um, I just think it's a, it's a great all around tie in to, to the home. Absolutely. And I think this image I'm showing in the background, like this is, it looks kind of like a, maybe an office area, kind of a living room, whatever it might be. And I think if you look at the system that's being used there, it's very similar to what you might find within a closet. And the point here is that it's all kind of interchangeable. And again, I'm just trying to enforce the fact that, reinforce the fact that you need to give good thought to how you're going to use this space and look at the options that are out there. And, and they should tie together like any good renovation or any custom home build you want to make sure that one area doesn't jump out as, oh, that was clearly done in a different era or using a different, I'll be maybe a designer, maybe a different product line. There should be some consistency to keep things looking, um, you know, congruent throughout your, your home. One thing that I actually see fairly frequently with a variety of clientele is we'll design for multiple spaces in the home. For instance, this is a media center. Uh, we have our TV and some kind of pretty cool looking bookshelf or, or artifact storage, some floating shelves. Um, but we might design, say, a media center, the office, the pantry, the walk-in closet, and the mudroom all at once. So then that way they have the grand vision for their home. Everything is homogenous. It all looks like it belongs together. And then, we, have, of course, we have a final budget. So once mm -hmm. we do that, you can, it, it's not an all or nothing deal. You can pick and choose and do one or two systems at a time and then change the ones that you haven't already installed down the line. Um, well, of course you can change the ones that you have installed because pretty much everything is adjustable. So that's pretty nice too. Absolutely. I think you, you touched on the word budget and we should probably talk a bit about that right now. And so this is the Art Renovation Live. I'm your host, Paul Foster. Today's show is about closet design. And now we're discussing budget and options from the low end to the high end within how you can approach. And I guess, you know, one of the, the elephant in the room, I guess, for me is the Ikea PAX unit. Now people often, when they come to me with a budget, default they think they need to consider Ikea PAX. And Ikea PAX has its place in the marketplace. But I think too often people just go straight there without realizing 
there's other options at that same price point. And for us, sometimes we'll build custom built-in units. And that's something that um, generally is not very expensive, but they typically have limitations too, as far as when you get into some really advanced finishing options when it's being custom made, it can get a little bit expensive. So I'll show you a couple of examples of what we mean here. So here's in a front entry. This is an MDF unit that we custom built with a stain grade bench, um, you know, behind the triple sliding door system. Here's in their rear entry. Again, they wanted to just split it up. These components would all be available to buy off the shelf somewhere, but we couldn't find the exact configuration we wanted. So we just made them custom in house and had the painters paint them when we we're finishing uh, the rest of the home, right? But we also did, you know, recently do a, an IKEA PAX unit. And we ran into some real challenges within using the prefab sizes they have within a limitation in a floor space or, you know, availability for a wall span, whatever it might be. And that's where I think people need to be very careful about when you go run into the PAX unit. And again, there's a time and place to use it. And I will get behind it at times when it makes good sense. But often you run into a, a dead space somewhere where now you, you have a void and it can't be well used. And I know that you guys, have, you told me that you guys have a product line on more of the affordable side. Let's talk a bit about that so we can, we can see what those would be and give people a good opportunity to look at other options when they're discussing lower budget closet organizers. So if, if any, any one of our level one or floating units where the levels are kind of a bit misleading because you can steal almost anything you want from level two, three, and four. So you can steal drawers, accessories. Um, you can do, you know, different shelves, different slide out options, and you can put it all in a floating system. So we're going to go back to my friend here, the reach in closet in our showroom with the triple sliding doors. And what's important to know about this is the only thing that's standard California closets, as far as width is concerned, are our drawers. And we have a bunch of different drawer sizes and the accessories. Because of course, we're not going to engineer a whole new tie rack for you. Everything else, like the hanging sections, the shelf widths, um, the height of the side panels, it's all fully customizable to everybody's space because I've never run into a home in the same style of home from the same builder. There's slight variations in walls or customers have made independent changes and it just doesn't fit off the shelf. So that's where California closets can really, really actually bring a design home because you're going to have zero wasted space. And any mm -hmm. of those dead space with, you know, empty corners or voids or large filler strips or something that just doesn't finish quite right, we can take care of that starting at a level one system, but then working our way up to whatever the client would, would want to finish at. Um, so, you know, we're just making really excellent use of that and not wasting an inch. Mm-hmm. How does it work then? Like, is it an option for somebody to buy your system and install it themselves? So yes, you can do a self-installation, but there are some definite rules about self-installation. Uh, we have a general self-installation guide for level one system only. The drawers are all pre-manufactured in our shop. Um, and they're just basically like, you know, plug and play, you just pop them in after you install your drawer slides and, and it's perfect. Um, after level one, since California Closets has a, such a specifically catered product, the installation gets incrementally more complex as you go up in the different levels. So, you know, level one with our classic cabinetry that we're looking at here for the reaching closet is a real stretch from this virtuoso unit, which is mm -hmm. extremely complex. Um, yes, it, it looks simple but everything has to be perfectly plumb and true. And it has a certain way to join everything. Once you start adding lights, you really have to know what you're doing in the mm -hmm. order of processes because you have to run wires. You have to have an intimate knowledge on how everything's assembled. So then that way, either you don't drill something that you shouldn't clip something in that you'll have to take out and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. I think you just basically summarized the value of a general contractor on a very small granular scale. So too often people think they can take it on themselves and there's specialized steps and you've referred to an order of operations, which clearly within your more advanced systems is very important, right? So I think as a homeowner, if you're planning to do your own renovation and maybe it's just attacking your closet system, you should do your research and talk to someone who really understands 
um, the system you plan to use, if you're going to use California closets, well, then obviously go talk to them and they can show you then what you probably could install yourself to save a couple of bucks and what things you shouldn't because you'll probably cause some damage, void a warranty, and in the end, waste a bunch of money. Um, and we see that often in renovations where people want to try to do it themselves. Oh, I'm going to hire all my own sub trades. There's no point paying the extra for the general contractor. And then what happens is they do it outside of the correct order or the quality control isn't there or something is overlooked and it ends up costing way more money in the long run. So sorry to go off on a tangent on that, but it's something that uh, it's a great point that you made about, look, um, there, you almost shouldn't allow someone to do a more complex install unless obviously they're somehow trained or if they're a skilled carpenter, but you have a proprietary system. So there'll no doubt be some uh, technical oddities within how it goes together. That's, and the thing is, that's a really good point. You can't be an expert on, and I'm, you know, I'm cursed at, you know, amateur handyman. The thing is, if I have a more complex closet system, I'm not even going to take it. Our installers are a white glove service. Um, so we, we see everything full to installation to where you just put your clothing on it. We clean it off, wipe it all down. You have a limited lifetime warranty with all of California Closet's product. Uh, that's when, of course, we have our installers do, do the installation for you. Um, and they, they know all the little tricks and tips and everything that comes with years of experience and technical training with that product. So even on a class one system or a level one system, um, if you're unfamiliar with the product or maybe you haven't ever installed cabinetry or, or a closet system that's flat packed before, it, it, it's going to take you four times as long and it's not going to be as pretty just because it's muscle memory and, and it's, it's training. So I'm perfectly okay saying that, uh, you know, trust, trust in your professionals and trust in your experts, including your general contractor. They make a world of difference in the quality of your family and your process while you're going through your project. Absolutely. Well said. And I'd say, you know, I think in the end, like we have, here's a few shots that these, again, these are not from California closet. But I'll talk about this for a second here. So on some of the higher end jobs that we do, we'll have our cabinet makers, design and ultimately fabricate and install the closet systems too. And in this specific one, we did this, it all kind of matched the cabinetry and the profiling throughout in the colorway throughout the bathroom, um, the kitchen area, and there was some consistency there. And generally speaking, I think you can match almost any door profile, but there certainly is not a rule of thumb that has to match. Some clients want it that way. Others treat it as a separate space in, in this, instance they wanted it because it was all connected the ensuite bathroom a changing area and the closet they wanted there to be some consistency there within how it was all um designed and how it all looked from the same line of sight absolutely and the big thing is like depending on your specific personality and your space and your again your grand vision for the finished space or spaces um you, you want to go with what will make you happy. But the way that I like to look at the California closets is it's, it's a custom piece of furniture that we are specifically putting something in. So it's either going to be clothing for a closet. It's going to be garage stuff. It's going to be a mudroom. It's going to be a bookcase. Um, so it's the same thing as if you, you know, you went down to, uh, you know, a furniture store and you pick something off the shelf, that's going to be a custom piece of furniture that doesn't need to match your kitchen cabinetry. Doesn't need to match your, your living room furniture because it's its own specific niche. That in mind, we want to take considerations to make sure that everything is homogenous and flows together with what our clients are looking for aesthetically in their space and then functionally as well. So we take all of that in, into consideration with our in-home consultation process. Because then that way, if we're in your space, we can see what you have now, we can talk about your vision for the future, and we can design for it together with all of the answers to the questions right in front of us. So that's very good. Um, you guys also do some garage systems as well, right? You betcha. Okay. I'm just trying to find, I know you sent me a couple of pictures, but I'm having difficulty finding them here. And sometimes the downside to Instagram is the way that I have to pull up the photos for the show. So bear with me here. There, I think this is the one. So tell us a bit about that and how, like, ultimately, um, this looks like a cabinetry system, whether it be used in your home as your maybe not your kitchen but a wet bar area here we've applied this into the garage 
And do you have specific products and systems that would work that are tailored towards garage use? Obviously, you got a pegboard here to hang tools on. Can you tell me a bit about, about your product line for garages? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the TFL press board that we use for the closet or for the pantry or for the mudroom, it's the same stuff that we'd use for the garage with a couple of defining features that we differentiate because garages aren't usually as clean as your closet or the interior of your home because they house your vehicles or your tools or your mower, etc. So um, that TFL board is very, very hardy, easy to clean and easy to maintain. We put on those aluminum roller legs. Uh, so then that way we pop it off the floor so we can dodge a foundational ledge or, you know, avoid moisture or any dirt or grime that might accumulate on the garage floor. Again, just keeping the maintenance of that system easy. Uh, one of the other items which is featured in this office is one of our track walls. So right now we have office accessories on here, but we provide uh, a variety of track walls and we can add those colored separators in there to match. I might have lost my audio here. You still there, Reese? Well, I can't hear Reese. Let's quickly talk about the giveaway item. I hope you can hear me. So we're, we're giving away, thank you to California Closets, $250 worth of California Closets Essentials. These are hangers, jewelry boxes, watch winders, and other accessories. There's a few images of them here in the background. Um, to enter into the draw, you need to enter into the comments the year in which um, the California Closets was established. I've seen the answer posted in the comments already. So go ahead, go look for that, punch it in there. At the end of the show here, probably in about five, six minutes, we're gonna do the giveaway. So enter your comments in there now. And again, thanks so much, Reese, for uh, donating the prize. Are you back? We got audio with you, Reese. I can't hear you, Reese. Oh, can anybody else hear me out there? So I'm going to show them to throw me a thumbs, thumbs up. Oh, all right. Maybe we'll get Reese back in here in a second. I'm hoping you can still hear me. Oh, there we go. Pulling Reese back into the call here. All right. Thanks, Navin. I can see you're saying you can hear me, so I appreciate that. Hey, Reese. Paul, oh, I got you. Thanks. Back. All right. Nothing like technology crapping out. Uh, yeah. I it happens here. <laughs> All good. That's the joy of the good. live show. You never know what you're going to get. Like no bumps in the road so far. Ah, so yeah. much for that. Yeah. All good. Nice. So is there anything else at the showroom you want to show us? Uh, there, there's a couple of specific products. And so California clauses, we have our standard lineup, but then also a whole bunch of custom, uh, custom materials that we can really make the space look great with. For instance, this is an indigo back painted glass done up in matte with a steel frame on it. Um, these are just some really slick hardware touches that we can add to any system. Doesn't matter how simple or how complex it is. Um, just to add a little bit of pop or something individual or unique to match that personality or that space of the customer. So we have lighting with uh, some inset boxes. They're called like a box and a box look or a shadow box. Um, and in this particular system, we got rid of all the drill holes. So we can do all sorts of stuff like that because we essentially have full control over our product line. There's a couple limitations, but really those don't get in the way of too many things. Um, but then, you know, we also have... So much cool stuff that we can add to doors, drawers, backing, countertops, um, drawer inserts, uh, all of our hardware and handles that we have. We have three different standard finishes in gold, graphite, matte aluminum, and chrome, which I kind of combine together. Um, and just, just the quality of this product line is really fantastic. So with a couple of little free upgrades, for instance, we have a fabric inlay in our hanging poles, which looks super slick. Nice. So, yeah, apart... definitely. I think, I mean, here you get a sense of the attention to detail that's available. Again, like we started with the show, there are so many options available within your closet, whether it be the layout, the configuration, the products, some of the bells and whistles, whether you get into pullouts and lightings and all these different things. And it's something definitely worth considering. And, you know, if you're planning renovation and it includes a bedroom or a closet space, um, you owe it to yourself to give it a good look, right? I would say at the very least, go sit down with California Closets, have a chat with an expert like them 
who specializes in that specific product and application. And if in the end you go, you know what? I can't justify the spend or there's some limitation there. At least you've been educated and now you know. And now you can go on from there and you can look at your other options in the marketplace and decide what is good value to you, right? Some people are happy with something simple and they don't want to spend money on some of the op options that are out there and don't see the value in it. And that's okay. It's not for everybody. But I think that, you know, we do lots of that mid to high end custom home reno and even within our project, so often we see people just kind of turn the blind eye to the walk-in closet and to the closet in general. And it's, such, it's, a, it's a hard sell for us. And we're not a closet design expert. Our designers that we work with are very good. But I think at the same time, that's a specialty item getting into closets. And I think it's something that, um, you know, you owe to yourself to at least take a look and see what's out there. Do your research and make sure that at the end of the day, you're happy You've gone through a huge project, perhaps. The last thing you want to do is regret the choices that you've made within your closet. Because you're going to be in there every day and, you know, make sure that you're happy at the end of it all. Um, I couldn't have said it better myself. And it's we've been looking at a lot of big systems in the showroom. There's no project too small or too large or anywhere in between. Uh, California Closets tackles everything. And again, like you said, Paul, trust your experts. Um, they're, they're specialized. They're experienced. They're going to give you the right, you know, uh, right techniques and the right knowledge. So then that way you can carry through your project seamlessly and have a really happy end result. Because uh, the last thing you want to do is have that buyer's remorse where you say, oh, I should have paid more attention to this. or I wish I had that suggestion. Um, you know, might as well get someone involved who, who can show you all those options from the get go. Absolutely. Um, we have, uh, we have a winner for the giveaway item. Amax Woodworks, you're the winner. I will direct message you later on and then we'll look at a way to um, get you to come by and I guess pick it up probably from California Closets directly would make the most sense. So congrats to Amax Woodworks. Uh, thanks for everyone else who joined into the, uh, into the contest. Um, if there's any questions out there, fire away. Um, I got a comment from Alyssa says it's so true. We had a closet fail at one point and it was the worst. And uh, I don't know the parameters of what went wrong, but I know for me as a general contractor, there's nothing worse, worse than at the end of the job, seeing someone unhappy with some corner of their home, especially if it's through a, as a result of design choices, right. Or where they want or don't want to spend their money. And I think, that's, that's my job as a good general contractor to help guide someone through and make sure we don't have some sort of a dead spot or an area that should have had more attention or you should have had maybe a bit more budget while we could have clawed back some of the expenditure in other areas to make sure that, you know, it, it really shined where it needed to. So the, the closet is just, can be the Achilles heel in my opinion, too often when it comes to that uh, ensuite bathroom, bedroom renovation, the closet, you got to put some resources towards it. Absolutely. And you know what? A lot of the times when uh, I, I get lots of calls out, I'm going to say probably about 15 or 20 percent of every call is from a closet catastrophe. Um, and I would say closet emergency is when it's fallen off the wall. And it's more often than not that we see a lot of other systems uh, that are not California closets that have failed structurally and they've completely fallen off wall due to either overweight or age or any of those items so that we can go in and get them a, a even if it's a simple closet even if it's a small space it's going to be sturdy reliable and effective um so and even 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 the simple ones look amazing yeah absolutely it's a good point and anything low quality anything sucks I, there's no other word for it like generally for us we don't put in any entry-level products in our project because i don't want the warranty headache I want to put in quality materials one time. Let's get it right. Be happy with the process and your spend and then enjoy your home. Right? So in any case, we're going to get shut down here in about a minute by Instagram. So Reese, thanks so much for coming on the show today, sharing your knowledge, information about your products and what's available. Um, if you guys have any questions for Reese, um, then you can reach him. Do, 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 do. There you go. Uh, California clauses directly. If you have questions about a bigger project, you need an expert when it comes to your renovation. Um, well, I guess that's me. 
Paul from Contact Renovation to Custom Homes. I'm your host of the Art of Renovation Live. If you need any advice along the way, even if you're planning your own project, you can give me a call. I'm happy to help out. I'll help you avoid some of those landmines that exist out there and make sure that you end up with a great end result, whether you do it yourself or whether you want to hire someone like us. Thanks so much for joining the show. It's been the Art of Renovation Live. See you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.